Hello and welcome everybody, my name is Elliot, and in this video I'm going to tell you about a classic physics problem. The question is, if you hang a rope up with its ends pinned at two given points, what shape is the rope going to make? The answer goes by the name of a catenary, and after watching this video, you'll see catenaries showing up all over the place, from bridges to fences, and even dangling computer wires. So, say we have a rope of mass m and length l and the two ends of the rope are pinned at some given points. Then the question is, what shape is the rope going to make as it hangs between these two points? To answer this question, we're going to imagine slicing up our rope into many little pieces. Since the rope is at rest, the total force acting on each piece has got to be zero. Imposing that condition will tell us the shape that the whole rope has got to take. So here's a little piece of this rope. The left end is at coordinates x and y, and the right end is at coordinates x plus dx and y plus dy. The length of this little piece of rope and the limit that dx and dy get arbitrarily small is just given by the Pythagorean theorem. It's dx squared plus dy squared, and then we take the square root. Now I want to simplify that by grabbing a factor of dx from inside the square root and pulling it out front. So in other words, we have dx times the square root of 1 plus dy by dx squared. Or equivalently, dx times the square root of 1 plus y prime of x squared, where y of x is the thing we're looking for. It's the shape of the curve traced out by the rope. So the total force on our little piece of rope has got to be zero. And there's only three forces acting on it. We've got gravity pulling straight down, that's the mass of our little piece of rope, dm, times g, the acceleration due to gravity. And then we've got two tension forces, one pulling forward to the right at one end, and one pulling backward to the left at the other end. Both the total vertical and total horizontal forces have got to vanish. So we can break our tension forces up into their horizontal and vertical components. Call those t sub x and t sub y. Now, the first thing to notice is that the only forces acting in the horizontal direction are these components of tension. Gravity is pulling straight down. That means that the horizontal component of tension has got to be a constant, so that the horizontal force to the right at one end cancels against the horizontal force to the left at the other end. So in other words, Tx as a function of x is some constant. Let's call it c. In the vertical direction, meanwhile, we have the two vertical components of tension as well as gravity pulling straight down. So ty on the right end, that's at x plus dx, minus ty at the left end, x, has got to equal the weight of the piece of rope, g times dm. We're going to assume here that our rope is uniform, meaning that it has constant mass per unit length. That's the total mass m of the rope divided by its length l. Then the mass dm of our little piece is that mass density, m over l, times the length of the piece, ds. So coming back to our vertical tension equation, we can write the right-hand side as m times g divided by l times ds, where ds we found is dx times the square root of 1 plus y prime of x squared. Now I'm going to divide both sides by dx. Then the left-hand side just becomes the derivative of ty, ty prime of x. So, by demanding that the total force on our little piece of rope must be equal to zero, we've obtained two equations. The horizontal equation that says that the horizontal component of the tension is a constant. And the vertical equation which says that the derivative of ty is equal to mg over l times the square root of 1 plus y prime squared. The next thing we need to realize is that the horizontal and vertical components of the tension are not independent. Together, they make a vector with components tx and ty. And this vector has got to point along the tangent direction to the rope, which points along dx, dy. In other words, the ratio of ty over tx has got to be the same as the ratio of dy over dx, which is the slope y prime of the curve. Since tx was just a constant c, this gives us an equation that says that ty is equal to c times y prime of x. 
And if we take the derivative of that equation, it says that ty prime is equal to c times y double prime. Now we can combine that with our earlier equation for ty prime in order to eliminate the tension altogether and just get an equation for the function y. We get c times y double prime is equal to mg over l, 1 plus y prime squared, square root. And if I simplify this a little bit, we can write it as y double prime equals kappa times the square root of 1 plus y prime squared, where I've defined kappa as mg divided by c times l, for short. This is what we've been after, a differential equation whose solution will tell us the shape y of x of the rope. That was all the physics. Now we're going to have to do some math to actually solve this equation and figure out y of x. I've also written up some notes, by the way, that go along with this video. So if you'd like to see all these equations collected in one place, you can check that out at the link I'll put in the description. So how are we going to solve this equation? Well, the first thing to notice is that this second order equation for y can be thought of as a first order equation for u equals y prime. In other words, if I define u equals y prime, I can write the same equation as u prime equals kappa times the square root of 1 plus u squared. So now this is a first order differential equation, and we can solve it pretty easily just by separating the variables. So in other words, I'm going to put all the u's on one side and the x's on the other side. I've got du divided by the square root of 1 plus u squared on the left, and kappa times dx on the right. And then we just integrate both sides. Now how are we going to do this integral over u? Well, it looks like the kind of integral we might be able to do with a trig substitution. And in fact, if we had had a minus sign in the bottom instead of a plus, like in the integral of dv over the square root of 1 minus v squared, then we could have done the integral by letting v equal sine of theta. Because then dv equals cosine of theta d theta, and 1 minus v squared is 1 minus sine squared, which is cosine squared, and then I take the square root, and I get cosine. So now we've got a cosine both on the top and on the bottom, and they cancel out in the integrand. So I just get the integral of d theta, which is of course theta, or back in the original variable, the inverse sine of v. Now that's not quite the integral that we wanted, where we had 1 plus u squared in the denominator. But if we do a change of variables and let u equals i times v, where i is the square root of minus 1, then the integral over u turns into i times the integral over v, divided by the square root of 1 minus v squared. And that's the integral we just did. So we get i times the inverse sine of v on the right or back in our original variable, i times the inverse sine of u divided by i. So we've done our integral, and we've learned that i times the inverse sine of u over i is equal to kappa times x, plus some integration constant that we'll call a. Now if we solve for u equals y prime, we get y prime of x equals kappa x plus a divided by i, I take the sine of that and then multiply the whole thing by i. Now don't worry, the shape of the rope is obviously not going to turn out to be imaginary, and so those factors of i have got to disappear. But how's that going to work? Well, you might know that the sine function can be expressed in terms of exponentials as sine of theta equals e to the i theta minus e to the minus i theta divided by 2i which in turn means that if I take i times the sine of theta over i, all the i's cancel out, and I get e to the theta minus e to the minus theta divided by 2. This function has a special name. It's called the cinch of theta, which stands for hyperbolic sine. And so what we've learned is that our slope function, y prime of x, is totally real, and it's given by the cinch of kappa x plus a, which again is just shorthand for e to the kappa x plus a minus e to the minus kappa x plus a, all divided by 2.
Now we just have to integrate this function one more time in order to figure out y of x. We just get back the same exponential, e to the kappa x plus a, divided by kappa, plus e to the minus kappa x plus a, all divided by 2. This function again has a special name. It's called cosh, the hyperbolic cosine. So finally, we get y of x equals 1 over kappa times cosh of kappa x plus a plus b, where b is another integration constant. This is the solution to the equation that we've been trying to solve, and we'll see what it looks like in just a second. So the answer to our question, what's the shape of a hanging rope, is a hyperbolic cosine. Historically, this shape has been known as a catenary. Now the last thing we need to do here is figure out these constants, a and b, as well as kappa. Remember that kappa was set equal to mg over lc, where c was the horizontal component of the tension. We're told here where the ends of the rope are fixed. So let's set up our coordinates so that one end is at the origin and the other is at some point x0, comma y0. Then by demanding that y of 0 equals 0, we learn that 1 over kappa times cosh of a plus b has got to vanish. Likewise, by requiring that y at x0 equals y0 tells us that 1 over kappa cosh kappa x0 plus a plus b should equal y0. That gives us two conditions, but we have three parameters, so we still need one more. And the missing condition is the fact that the rope has length L. Remember that we solved this problem by breaking the rope up into many little pieces of length ds. Then by adding up all those little lengths, we had better reproduce the total length of the rope. So we need to evaluate the integral here of dx times the square root of 1 plus y prime squared from 0 to x0. The integrand here is just y double prime over kappa according to the differential equation that we just solved. So when we do the integral, y double prime just turns into y prime. Setting this equal to the length of the rope gives us one more condition. L equals 1 over kappa times cinch of kappa x0 plus a minus cinch of a. Now we have three equations in the three unknowns a, b, and kappa and we can solve. Or at least, we can solve numerically. These are pretty complicated equations. That's what I've done in this animation that I made. One end of the rope is pinned at the origin, and the other end you can drag around to see what shape the rope will make. Of course, you can also try this out for real with any piece of rope or string that's hanging around your desk, or even just a spare wire or cable. But I'll put a link to this animation in the description below if you want to play with it too. So that does it for this video. I hope you liked it. Remember, I'll also put a link in the description to the notes that I wrote to go along with the video, which you can read over if you want to see all the details of this problem worked out. Please hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and let me know in the comments if there are any other classic physics problems you'd like to see me cover in the future.